Uh, good evening. It is May 9th, uh, Tuesday, May 9th. We're here in the Berlin room of the Ontangi Administrative Offices. There's not been a coup, uh, Mr. O'Brien. Uh, it's unfortunately uh, due to a family, uh, family matter that he had to attend to is not uh, available to be here tonight. Uh, but I'm going to call this regular meeting of the Board of Education to order. Uh, Mr. Jenkins, can you please call the roll? And Mr. Lester. Here. Dr. Dabrico. Here. Dr. Wise? Here. Dr. Wally? Here. All right, would you please join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance? I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Uh, second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All right, Mr. Jenkins, please call the roll. Mr. Lester? Yes. Dr. Dabrico? Yes. Dr. Wise? Yes. Dr. Wallach? Yes. Okay, uh, the board president's report. Uh, so two items uh, we want to address. First of all, uh, all of us up here had the, uh, the great pleasure last night to attend the district senior awards night. Uh, this is one of my favorite events of the year uh, to attend, not only because we get to recognize all of the hard work and accomplishments um, of all of our seniors to see what they've done and where they're going uh, from here, but also to see the community in action. There's, there are a whole lot of awards uh, that uh, recognize the memory of people that have been lost uh, untimely and their families and their friends are, are really trying to keep their memories alive. And it, it's such a, uh, a really a testament to the support that our community gives uh, that they want to you know, continue to give back to our schools and, and to our students and to help send them on their way. Uh, so it's just an incredibly touching time. Um, and uh, you know, I, we appreciate, I know, the, the opportunity to be there. Want to give special congratulations to Dr. Wise for her two daughters winning, uh, winning awards uh, last night. Uh, but really just wanted to thank the community for all of the work, everyone who donated, uh, you know, who presented, uh, who supported our students at that event. Um, second, as you may have read in, our, uh, in you know, the news and in other places, we, uh, our superintendent search is proceeding apace. Uh, we have narrowed the field down to two finalists. And I think it's important to talk a little bit about how we got to this point. Uh, you know, Superintendent Rafe, when he announced his retirement back in January, that kicked off a, a whole lot of work that, that we went through to try to uh, identify the best candidates for this job. Uh, we spent a lot of time um, identifying appropriate search firms. Then when we got the, the search firm of uh, the ESC of Central Ohio, uh, went through and did a survey of everybody in the district, um, conducted focus groups. We had 190 participants in focus groups and 1,321 responses um, to our various surveys, just trying to get information about what's important to you in the community. Um, and we took that to heart. We really, uh, we reviewed all the information, we looked at the priorities, we looked at the responses that everyone gave, um, and used that to help inform our, uh, you know, how we wanted to post it, you know, how we're going to engage the community in that way. Um, we then opened it up, and after 30 days, we had 13 applicants from all across the country, from as far uh, west, I believe, as Arizona, and all the way over to the state of Delaware on the East Coast. Uh, last week, we met, and after you know, paring it down to a group of five semifinalists, we interviewed those folks on Tuesday and Wednesday of last week, uh, spent some time getting to know them and, and understanding their ideas for the district. Uh, we then ultimately uh, narrowed it down to two finalists. Uh, those finalists uh, in alphabetic order are Dr. Joseph Clark, uh, who's the superintendent of the Nordonia Hills City School District, uh, which is up in sort of the northeastern part of the state. Uh, he's been a superintendent there for quite, uh, quite a number of years, I think a, a dozen years or so. Uh, he's also a professor in the American College of Education, a published author. Um, and he's held assistant superintendent positions in Kent City Schools and then Barberton City Schools. Uh, the other uh, finalist is uh, Mr. Todd Meyer, who's our chief operating officer, has been on the district leadership team for a number of years, um, also was the original principal at Orange High School, was the original principal at Westover Central uh, High School, um, and was uh, the uh, executive director of secondary curriculum and instruction, I had to make sure I read that to get it right, uh, for, for Westerville schools. Uh, both of these folks present, um, you know, 
uh, very uh, different strengths, and, and we look forward to the community meeting them. Uh, at our uh, meeting on Thursday, we're going to have the board is going to interview these folks. We're also going to have a group of administrators and then a group of community members who's going to sit down and really spend time with them. It's very important that we that we have that level of engagement. Uh, so, and then after that, we'll, we'll make our decision and we'll go from there. Uh, so we thank everyone who has participated in this process. We look forward to making the best selection for, uh, for the future of the district and uh, you know, having that decision pretty soon. Um, with that, I'll open it up to anybody else for any other uh, updates or comments. I, I appreciate you going over the credentials of our, our two final candidates, although I would like to add one more. I think it's um, uh, interesting, it's noteworthy that uh, Mr. Meyer was also Mr. Mark Race's boss for a while. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> for 10 months. <laughs> 10 months. Uh, I was just as difficult then. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Can, can we move on from this? Sure. Yeah. All right. So, committee report. Um, School Advocacy Committee, so thankful for our community um, willing to um, step up for their neighbors. Um, the short story is we get a third of the ha uh, to a half of what um, a private school gets per student. Let that sink in. So your Olentangy team obviously has been advocating nonstop uh, for fair school funding. Uh, today Kelly came in from our School Advocacy Committee. Uh, spoke in a Senate committee hearing advocating for our community. It is a long process. He waited a long time to get there. I think they're supposed to do five minutes um, per person, and the first one went 30. So that's a good uh, bellwether where, where, how long it's going to take. So very thankful for our school advocacy committee stepping up for their neighbors uh, to advocate for fair school funding. Okay. All right. Uh, well, with that, we have uh, one presentation item on the agenda. I'm, I'm uh, very excited about this. I want to uh, welcome Mr. Uh, Michael uh, DeManna, is that right? Uh, from Orange Middle School to present on the Olentangy Model United Nations program. Yeah. All right. Well, first, I'd like to thank the esteemed board and Dr. Rafe to uh, allowing us to opportunity to present some amazing Olentangy students and here to talk about an incredible program that they run. Um, quick little background, o Model UN came to Olentangy in 2011, that's the year I was hired on at Orange Middle School's seventh grade social studies position. I was able to convince the principal to buy into this program called the uh, Ohio Model United Nations. And then in 2018, we decided to go with our own in-house Model United Nations and Olentangy Model United Nations was born. Um, so both programs do a really good job of immersing students in the issues of the world today and solutions for them, uh, and understanding global culture, and also in public speaking, getting in front of people and talking. Um, the opportunity that Olentangy Model United Nations provides them is, is a step higher. It lets them actually run the program. This is a student-run program, and they're gonna do everything, all the day-to-day -day work, the make the videos, do the training, do, you know, teach the kids everything, and then run the summit itself. Not something you could do in the other program. Um, so with that, I'd like to go ahead and introduce them to, to start talking about their program. I think you'll really like them. They're some amazing kids. I will start with uh, Jonavi Kavadia uh, from Olentangy Orange High School. Come on up. All right, so as he said, um, I'm John V. Cavadia, and I go to Orange High School, and I'm the Secretary General of Model United Nations. I'm Megan Boda. I go to Olentangy High School, and I'm the Assistant Secretary General. I'm Kirthi Goodla, and I go to Olentangy High School as well, and I'm the General Assembly Vice President. Um, I'm Siri Pona, and I go to Olentangy Berlin, and I'm also a member of the General Assembly staff. Hi, my name's Nick Woolard, and I am the General Assembly President of the Olentangy Model United Nations. So first, we would just like to talk about, really, what is Olentangy Model United Nations and how do we work? So for students or delegates partici participating in the program, the first thing they would do is find a group of their friends or people at their school that they may not know, and they're going to form a little group, and they're going to pick a country that is part of the United Nations. 
So throughout the year, they would be researching potential problems about the country or anything about their economy, cultural, culture, stuff like that. And through their research, they would build that problem into a resolution, which is really a solution to the problem that they would fa that they find. So they'll build that resolution. They would craft a speech along with that to present at the summit, which is where they would present the resolution, read their speech, and all of their work through the year culminates at the summit. And then for us officers throughout the year, we really were all the behind the scenes stuff. So we worked to create the research documents that they use, their, use to find their research, and we plan out where the summit's gonna be, how it's gonna work, um, all the money stuff that comes along with it. A little bit about our summit itself. Um, we have uh, the first day where we do council sessions, and that's a smaller group of students with about 30 to 40 kids, and they go up, they present their resolutions, and the next step, if they pass, is General Assembly, which is all of Model UN, so there's about 400 students, and um, the resolutions that have passed will go up, and they present, and then all the countries will vote to pass or fail. We have a ton of fun activities that are planned during summit as well. We have talent shows, scavenger hunts. We always do a trivia contest, which is a ton of fun. But yeah, all of it's um, super fun, which is why we joined. Um, and here's a little video. Uh, what's in like one or two words, how would you describe Model UN? Um, you think about it before you just put me on the spot like this. Um, Well-rounded. Model UN is collaboration and research. It's about understanding the world. So in a couple words, what does Model UN mean to you? It means having the best weekend of your life and having an experience that you'll never forget. It's like preparation for the real world. It brings together a community. Yes. Stimulating. I would describe all the Tangibody United Nations as fun. It's so hashtag fun. 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 But this is a club for nerds. How could it be? I got into it because my parents wanted me to do it, and now I do it because I love it, so I would say see that a big part of Model UN and why we join it and why a lot of people have joined it is because of the fun aspect, but that's not all that it does. Um, a big part of it is these skills that especially us as officers have gained, like we're able to um, communicate with people that are at a higher level than us. Like for example, we've communicated with several different venues in the past to try to get bigger venues because our club is growing so much. Um, we're able to be very comfortable with public speaking. Like for example, we're able to stand up here and talk to you without really being too worried about it because of this club. Um, another thing is even just for the students that are part of the club throughout the year, they get to speak in front of a room of 400 people. Like 12, 12 year old kids are going up and speaking in front of a room of 400 people. And I think that that's really incredible. And they get to work on resolutions throughout the year. So they're working on their writing skills, which I think is also very commendable. So as Mr. Demana initially said a little bit, we started at the Ohio Model UN Conference back in 2011, but we wanted to leave that conference and start our own Model UN Summit because it was expensive and we wanted to still give kids the opportunity to continue debating and creating resolutions. So we thought to create our own summit, mostly because it was more affordable and we wanted to still get more opportunities. So coming to this year, we usually have our summits, like last year and then a couple years before, we have our summit at the Bridgewater Conference Center. And then 
it's a three-day summit, so we start on Friday, go Friday night, and then all day Saturday, and then end Saturday, Sunday afternoon. But because of our expanding numbers of this club, uh, we moved to Orange High School this year. So our summit was on Saturday and Sunday throughout the whole day. And we had 380 delegates attend, and then 80 countries participate with five to, uh, five to seven students in each country. Right, so, so this year, even though like our club has really been growing exponentially, like we started at like 200 kids and now we're at 400, so it's really doubled in size. And while being at the school was a lot of work and it was something new and it was definitely the perfect amount of space that we needed, our entire goal is to go overnight because that is what Ohio Model UN did and that is a big pushing point for getting our club to grow even more. We tried to market it last year and it ended up falling through, but essentially we need a lot more chaperones, we need a lot more sponsorships to make this a reality. But this is also a big, like, telling kids that it would be overnight, it would be Friday night and Saturday night, and then it would end on Sunday, so it would still be a three-day summit. But it would give us more time to do all the activities that we have, because we end up getting cut short. A lot of groups don't get a chance to present in General Assembly because we don't have enough time to accommodate for all these different groups. So we think that with overnight, we're given a little bit more leniency with our time, given time for kids to go back to their rooms and get a break, because they really don't get a break over that whole 27 hours. I mean, it's crazy, especially for us. We're moving around all the time. So we really do think that overnight would be a great benefit for us, but this is our end goal, and that's all we have for you today. You're great. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to open up to questions. You want to go? Because we're there together. We're there. We were, um, Kevin and I were actually there at Orange, and uh, it was awesome. It was an awesome experience. Um, yeah. It was just awesome. I mean, I was blown away by watching the work and then seeing the speakers, and I love it. It was awesome. It was Thank you. Wonderful work. We have a lot to learn from, from you all because nobody was personally attacking each other. You were arguing positions, <laughs> and you were staying professional, and that's something we need, and um, we can learn from you, you all to do that. I loved talking to Luke when I was leaving. Uh, very humbling to hear what his plans are. Um, this is a really special place to, to, to be, so thank you for what you do. I'm, I'm just, it's really cool. I had a blast at that thing. I could have stayed all day, but the adults aren't supposed to get involved, so I didn't, but it looked like a lot of fun. Um, so thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, so to further that, um, your, your point exactly, the, you mentioned goals of um, developing better global citizens and international leaders. And I think that really speaks to what uh, Dr. Dabrico uh, addressed. I, I'm curious about a few things. First of all, I'm a big fan of like work hard, play hard. So uh, that, <laughs> that cultural karaoke, I'm, I'm very interested in knowing more. We'll, we'll talk later. Uh, but anyway, um, you talked about leaving the Ohio Model UN, and I was looking at some of the bullets as to why that decision was made. And the ones that really jumped out to me were unfair policies and that it was lacking in inclusivity. Could anybody speak more to that? I'm, I'm just really curious to know more. In my opinion, the biggest thing that changed about, uh, that, that changed as we went to Ohio Model UN, or from Ohio Model Nation to Poland Tangent and the United Nations, is the best these kids could do if we'd stayed with them was to be a council president and run one of those council sessions. That, now, they get to put on their resume, they ran a club. They actually ran the whole thing. They planned it, they recruited. The one part that you don't see is, is their avid recruiting in all the buildings. And I just think it gives them so much more opportunity. I mean, yeah, sure, if they go down to the Ohio Conference, they're not talking in front of 400 kids, they're talking in front of 1,000. But in the, in the long run, when you're 11 years old and you're sixth grade, you're sitting up there and you see that many people out there, it, there's no difference. <laughs> you know, it's, it's more than you can count. Um, and to me, that's the best thing about us making this decision and going with Olin Tangent Model United Nations as opposed to the Ohio. I mean, if you guys ordered us to go back to that, we would, but, you know, <laughs> then they would, you know, they'd lose so much out of that. I mean, I just, I tell, every year I tell the senior leadership the, the, that this is just going to be something that you're going to be able to tell any, in any job interview any kind of thing, just say what you did. It was incredible. Mm -hmm. I mean, what they, you know, what, and what they're gonna do this year, 
is going to be amazing. And if they succeed in getting it to an overnight thing, there's going to be so many kids like coming up and hugging them, going, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, <laughs> so yeah. So um, it was very expensive. It was a very accelerated schedule. It would be a much shorter program for the high school. They would be done by December. So start in August, be done December. And instead of going all the way through till you know February or so, um, and they you know and, and these these guys are going to work all summer long too. They're working. They're already working now. They're going to work all summer. They're going to work in the fall. Uh, whereas at Ohio Model United Nations, they were brought in like three days for like one little weekend to plan, and then they go back and then they show up some a day. So I don't know if that answers your question 100%. Um, <coughs> yeah, and there was, I mean, I can't remember exactly what the specific concern we had with um, the organization, but it was, you know, there was, there was an organization that was making money. Mm -hmm. And um, there was some other, there was a couple other things that the principal we had a concern about that expressed us that we decided to pull back from that affiliation. And it was a, a, a little bit tumultuous time because we didn't know if we'd be able to get this organized and created. And, Mr. Manis stuck with it, uh, a group of students certainly stuck with it. I do what I typically do when somebody comes to me with for a problem. I looked at somebody on the leadership team and said, uh, Jack, uh, fix this. And Jack really took the lead on it. Um, was, Luke, don't laugh. You know that's what happened, right? Um, he, and he really did, did a great job supporting them. Uh, Holly Hansen was really involved back then when we were still trying to get this organized and off the ground. And it's only, again, I think it's just an example of, of what happens here at Olentangy. When something wants to get done, when these kids want to get something done, it gets done. And right. it gets done really well. So congratulations. Bravo. What uh, is, oh, what sorry. is, <laughs> what is the status of recruiting? Are, are you able to do middle schools as well? Oh yeah. Oh, it's, uh, have we, are we at Berlin Middle School yet? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. So yeah, we are at a school that hasn't even started yet. Basically. So three of our high schools and we have to also work on the middle schools. You know, when we were, when we, were when we were affiliated with- Is that Liberty now? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the entire district. Okay. Yes. When, we were, when we were affiliated with Ohio Model UN, Mr. Demand was kind of running it for the whole district, primarily with Orange Middle Orange High School kids because that was his base of operation. And some other kids would trickle in, friends would bring friends, but it was a much smaller scope. Um, once we decided to develop our own Ohio, our own model UN, um, we presented to the board and the board approved uh, adding supplementals. Uh, so we have a supplemental available at each building to support the students in the buildings and coordinate that. And, you know, now's the time to ask for something. The board, you have the board's attention. So, you know, that's when, like, not now, but you know. <laughs> Or me because I'm leaving. You know, I'm saying I'm saying yes to everything. So there we go. That's a well, so um, I want to echo what everybody else said. I think it, it's incredibly impressive um, what you're all doing. The, the the way you go about problem solving, and I know a few other people have mentioned that. I mean, that's vital, right? It, it's, despite what you see on cable news, like the way to solve things is not by screaming at each other, right? It, and the words that stuck out at me on your slide were complex, empathetic understanding, right? You, you're really trying to understand uh, where other people come from and engage them not in a, I'm just going to scream at you till you relent, but, but try to, to think <laughs> through that with them in a really principled way. Um, can you talk about how some of those lessons that you've, um, that you've had and that you've experienced in this program have influenced how you've engaged with other people or, or what you want to do in your future careers? I realize you guys. Guy. <laughs> well, you know, it's a tough question to put you on the spot. So, so do you want to know like, how it affects what we want to do in the future? Sure. Yeah. Um, Honestly, it's kind of, I guess, it's kind of crazy, but even after being a part of this club for so long, like, this isn't what I want to do in the future. I do think that, like, just the public speaking skills have helped me, and that's kind of why I stay in it, and it's helped me, like, not just with school things, essentially, but, like, I had, like, a choir showcase last weekend, and I emceed it because I'm so comfortable being on stage and talking to people, and, like, um, I think Megan has said that she did like an internship at the State House because she realized that this is something she was interested in. If you want to talk about that, <laughs> um, it wasn't the State House, but it was like the Delaware County Prosecutor's Office. Mm -hmm. So being in this club before I was an officer, it really allowed me to like know that I under like I'm interested in like public policy and government. So I started interning at the prosecutor's office and it just like expanded career opportunities for me. That's great. And then to talk about 
talk about the whole empathy idea, I guess. I know that our leadership team that was last year, um, one of the, like, the Secretary General from last year, one thing that he used to say a lot was that we don't want to call people out, we want to call them in. So it was kind of like, instead of when you have a problem with something, like, there isn't saying that it does run smoothly for the most part, but that isn't, like, with every group there are issues and there are problems that people have with each other, and we've had that in the past, but we tend to try to go about it in a very kind way because it, in the end it is a, a high school club that we're running, a high school, middle school club. So we try to talk to each other, we try to like make sure communication is very high to let everybody know that this is what we're doing and this is what you can do if you are interested in helping, just to make sure that everything is kind of running smoothly all the time. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Ray, are you ready for the superintendent's report? Yes, sir. They didn't tell you guys you might stay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you, I, you know, I'm sure you have studying to do, finals are coming up. And your presentation speaking skills are better than mine, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. So, good evening, everyone, and thank you all for being here. Thank you, Mr. DeManna. Dr. Woolard, good luck. <laughs> and um, thanks everybody for being here. Uh, starting off with our Living the Mission, this is uh, Teacher and School Staff Appreciation Week. So want to uh, recognize all of our own Tangy staff. Um, we've had a lot of activity this week and continuing all through uh, Friday. It's one of those great weeks, one of the best weeks to be in the building to, to get the love from um, throughout the community. So. Congratulations. Um, we had May 1st was the school lunch hero day. So our, our uh, school lunch uh, staff does a great job. They uh, do uh, school lunch hero survival kits. They uh, receive to thank them for serving uh, their students. So that's a lot of fun when they uh, do the superhero week. And May 5th was also bus driver appreciation day. So uh, Lori Carter Evans and her team put together some special treats for the drivers and mechanics that uh, Mr. Meyer and I got to go visit both of our transportation centers. So it's just a great time of year to appreciate all of our staff throughout the district uh, for all their hard work and another successful school year. Um, something I'm, I'm really proud of here, our uh, Old Tangy is the only public school district in the nation that has an in-house accredited training program through Orton Gillingham. Um, we have, over, have had over 400 teachers and administrators and structured literacy providers across the country attend. Um, as you know, the uh, state just passed a law requiring um, districts to provide students with uh, dyslexia, uh, specialized instruction with uh, an Orton Gillingham trained teacher. And we, at the beginning of this year, we had 142 trained staff already. We've uh, added 48 more to the ranks. Dr. Wise and our former board, Mindy, Mindy Patrick, as part of the Olentangy Dyslexia Network, were uh, crucial to that law passing in the state, but also pushing us forward um, with this initiative. So this is one of those things that I can, I can say without a doubt, we do better than anybody else in the, in the state or nation. Um, here you see some Shanahan Middle School sixth grade. Uh, the science department hosted nurses and surge techs from OSU Wexner Medical Center as part of our Bridge Ed uh, program, connecting their life science uh, to their life science standards. You see there they um, did some CPR, they dissected some organs, learned about cell destruction, some word uh, that I can't pronounce, um, <laughs> but electrocautery. Thank you, Mr. Wright. Appreciate you. <laughs> Um, you know, again, this is one of those things I'm really proud of that we got off the ground, the Bridge Ed program. Um, Ms. Davis and Mr. Meyer did a great job getting that going. We are uh, posting a position for an assistant director uh, that will work in the communications team, um, assistant director of strategic partnerships. strategic partnerships to facilitate the further growth and development of Bridge Ed. Um, I think that's just going to present tremendous opportunities for our students in the future. Oh. I clicked over fast because there was a picture of me in there 
Mrs. Beeman. Uh, I had an opportunity, Mrs. Beeman and I and Dr. Wallach had an opportunity to visit Liberty Middle School today. Uh, seventh grade student Benjamin Kay uh, won a, uh, a documentary, a C-SPAN documentary contest uh, for middle schoolers nationwide and he was the Ohio recipient and one of uh, 12 nationwide uh, uh, winners. He got a check for $3,500. So I appreciate Libby being there and Gary Merrill, Powell City Councilman Heather Carr, or a couple of the other dignitaries. So it was a great, um, uh, Ben's um, documentary was on, titled Losing a Generation. It was about the opioid epidemic. It's really uh, great to see. Um, we have some action items of note. Dan Maurer, one of our transportation supervisors, is res resigning at the uh, end of this year, so we wish him well. You have uh, approval of renewal of administrative and certified contracts. Uh, and when we get to those, I'll be pulling out uh, an item separately because um, uh, Stephanie Dabrico is one of our administrators whose contract will be renewing, so I have to give Mr. Uh, Dr. Dabrico a opportunity to abstain from that action item. Uh, these are all of our administrative and certified staff that have expiring contracts, so they'll be uh, renewing all those. Um, we have additional certified employment. Um, I think there's 11 teachers on this board agenda. Um, Aileen Miracle is being recommended to be a curriculum supervisor for the Unified Arts. That's a new position we've put in place for next year to help support all of our Unified Arts staff throughout the district. I have three uh, classified resignations. Erlene Breckler, who's been sec Administrative Secretary at Shanahan Middle School for over 30 years. Um, Lynn Byer Elizabeth Lynn Byerly uh, is the Secretary at Freedom Trail Elementary School. She was part of the staff that I think she originally worked at Alum Creek and was part of the staff that opened Freedom Trail. And Thomas Gildor Gilsdorf, a study hall monitor at um, Liberty Middle. So we wish all of them well in retirement. Um, and then there is a uh, recommended approval of the membership in the OHSAA for 23-24 school year. Um, and uh, there is, at the end of the agenda, after my action items, Mr. Meyer will come to the podium to present a chief operations officer item to accept the uh, resignation of Mrs. Catherine Rafe, who will be resigning at the end of the school year as well. Guess I should give her a shout out in case she's watching at home. <laughs> she's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> there are quite a few other, other items on the agenda. All the curriculum uh, materials that we've had presentations on in the past. Um, uh, as you remember, um, Mrs. Brown came to talk about bridges and other purchases. A lot of them are just renewals of, of programs that we're already using. Um, there's, you see your favorite on there, uh, Dr. Wise, uh, the geodes. We like the geodes, so that's a, that's a good one. A um, couple other items, you see the book purchase for um, Liberty, or excuse me, opening of Berlin Middle School. And then, as we discussed last week, the uh, six classroom modular unit for Cheshire Elementary School. And then finally, some important dates coming up. Um, what we like to say the best, one of the best dates in our calendar, our class of 2023 commencement is Sunday, May 21st at the Schottenstein Center. Our last day for students is the 25th and our teacher work day is the 26th. You guys will continue your busy May, April, May. Uh, we have a special board meeting Thursday, which I know will be a long one. That's why we're trying to get through this one quickly. A uh, special meeting on Monday. And, you know, it's, um, it's kind of, uh, it feels a little funny to say that our meeting on um, May 25th, we'll have uh, uh, our next superintendent appointed by then. So, um, I don't know. I guess it's noteworthy. <laughs> Any questions? I'm actually going to jump in if I may to add something about Mr. Ben K yeah. there today. Um, that that young man just did an outstanding job and was so poised. He mm -hmm. was he had the opportunity to be interviewed in front of his peers. Mm -hmm. I was also very impressed. Um, I was telling Mrs. Davis about this when I came in. I was impressed even by his, his classmates and the attention that they paid to him and the respect they mm -hmm. showed him um, for this honor. Additionally, uh, you, you referenced the check he, he won. So he, he won across the nation, but the, the representative from C-SPAN mentioned that what they do is they take the top 12 
mm -hmm. that they as a as an organization have selected and think are the best of the best and they publish them online or they put them out there without saying any you know numerical order they just put it out there to create like a fan favorite uh, and he won that too mm -hmm. <laughs> so kudos to Ben um, he has a very bright future and I thought it was so sweet too that his mom was the inspiration a large mm -hmm. inspiration behind all of that so yes it was then. it's a great time all right thank you all right thank you mr. Rafe uh, mr. Jenkins your treasurer's report Thank you, Mr. Lester. Before I get into uh, the particular items in the presentation, just want to call uh, the community and the board's attention to um, set July 6th, 2023 at 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, we have a regularly scheduled board meeting that evening at 6.30, uh, but at 6 o'clock p.m., the Olentangy Schools Records Commission will have its annual I shouldn't say annual, at least every 12 months. Um, the Records Commission consists of the board president, the superintendent, and me. Um, that is an open public meeting. It'll be right here, and it'll be at 6 o'clock uh, in case folks want to come see how the Records Commission does its thing. Now I'm ready for the presentation, Amanda. Um, my items this evening are pretty straightforward. Um, donations, uh, thank you, obviously goes out. Uh, to the uh, Pop Arts patrons of Olentangy Orange Performing Arts for replacement marching band uniforms, 90 of them. On the agenda this evening, I'm asking for the board's approval. Uh, we had to make a slight revision to the January 26th minutes, so those are being resubmitted for your approval, and then the minutes from April 25th and April 26th board meetings. We'll have the second reading uh, and approval of the five-year forecast. And if you like last week's or two weeks ago's presentations, tonight will be even better. It's two slides. Um, <laughs> the approval of the restated Olentangy Schools 403B plan. Um, as you know, we approved the MOU um, at the last board meeting with the OTA. That requires that we uh, modify and amend our adoption agreement for a 403B plan. The financial report for April uh, is attached. And I'm now going to give a very brief update on the five-year forecast and House Bill 33, which is the state biennium budget. So the five-year forecast, I will distill any changes uh, from last time down quite literally two slides. Um, so the five-year at a glance, and I'm just simply going to take a look tonight at the statement of revenues, expenses, and fund balances, the five-year in five seconds. Here we go. So you have a slightly modified um, cash balance. Um, and you know what? I grabbed the wrong picture. I apologize. I wish that was our ending balance. <laughs> so I have two different versions of the five-year. Hey, I could just say that's what it's for. You're looking at the five-year with the 2020 cost set. Um, so I grabbed the wrong picture when I threw in the image. The next one is the correct one. Um, ultimately, we anticipate ending with 63 days cash which is about $63 million carryover on fiscal 2027. That's spending about $1,111,990 per day. So again, the previous picture uh, is what could be. And I just simply had two of the exact same models up and grabbed the wrong one, so I'll get that repaired. Um, so that is the five-year uh, update. Ultimately, the change from last time we're up about five days in ending cash in 2027. Um, if someone were to say, what is that? It is just simply a revised estimate in our restricted grants and aid, uh, most specifically some of our catastrophic costs. Uh, first of all, that was longer than five seconds. Um, but second of all- uh, It's because it was a mistake. Yeah, uh, no. Uh, but just to be clear, can you talk a little bit about the difference of the cost sets? Because that's what the legislature is sort of looking at right now, and, and we're, we're able to see what an impact that is. Um, so can you just explain that a little bit? Absolutely. Um, you mind, Amanda, moving to the next slide, and that'll actually um, take care of it. A couple more, sorry. And one more. There we go. So the biggest difference is the green. So the blue, uh, kind of the Olentangy blue and then the light Berlin blue, if you add those two bars together, that is what we're projecting in state funding if 
the inputs in the formula that estimate the state share for costs. And what I mean by that is the formula is driven by the cost of a teacher, the cost of a teacher's benefits, the cost of an administrator, the cost of um, you know, business operations. All of that gets thrown in the mix. Right now the funding formula is using data from 2018. And when the governor released the budget and the House first um, created House Bill 33, they didn't change it. 2018 was the cost data, which most people are doing the math in your head. Yes, by the time this biennium was over, there'd be data that's seven years old. The reason that's impactful is kind of the state's portion of the formula is mostly driven by that cost set. And if it's locked in at data from seven years ago, but the local share is real time, <coughs> then what that does is that shifts a significant portion of state funding into the local category. The green is indicative of what will happen if the state keeps what the House amended and the House created substitute House Bill 33 and it's now in the Senate and it updated those cost sets to 2022. In this iteration, the cost sets for 24 and 25 would be locked in at 2022. That's just the way the law is currently written. And to be conservative, but you can still see that it's still significantly more funding. I left the funding sets at 2022 for fiscal years 26 and 27. The measure of the green, as you can see though, is the additional unrestricted uh, funding that we would get. And that is about uh, 14.9 million in fiscal 25, beg your pardon, uh, in fiscal 24, 11.1 uh, million or 11.0 million, and fiscal 25, almost $15 million additional. Uh, we'll get additional restricted grants and aid as well, and that is the uh, kind of lighter green to the tune of 856,000 and about 1.2 million. So all in all, uh, we'll get somewhere on the neighborhood of, as you can add all that up together, an additional $30 million over the course of the two-year biennium. Right now, that is what's in the law, um, and that is what the Senate is currently having hearings on deliberating. We are quite hopeful. We spent some time this week um, with Senator Brenner, um, trying to uh, get him to uh, believe, and we think that uh, we had a good productive talk, that keeping those 22 cost sets um, is very impactful to our district. All right, any questions? All right, thank you. You can say it, Dr. Dabrico. Every, every one of those green dollars is one we don't have to ask the community for. <laughs> it's relief. a game changer. Um, Mr. Rafe, you said, it, I think at um, Representative Edwards' office, you said fair school funding is tax relief for all Tangy families. Yes. Did you trademark that, by the way? No. <laughs> like Ricky Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> and just to be clear, Mr. Lester, um, the public can see what I've attached as agenda items. So even though I had the wrong graph, um, what's attached in board docs is all accurate. Um, Good. Good. Okay. Uh, all right. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Uh, now time for public participation. Do we have any? We have none. We do not. Okay. Uh, so we'll move on to our discussion item, which is the second reading of the policy updates. Uh, Dr. Fetty. Good evening. Were there any uh, questions or comments uh, before taking action on the policies tonight? Thank you. Good. <laughs> He's reaching new heights. <laughs> 74 that's, pages. That, yeah, that's five seconds, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> just, just one comment. Most of it is, it, from what I took away from it, is just <coughs> updating it to what we did in high school and college, which was APA standards, <laughs> right, <laughs> for writing conventions. I'm, a, a, am I overstating that? I mean, a couple dozen pages of APA updates. Um, yeah. they, they, um, they certainly always update their writing conventions as they evolve. Um, Typically, there's another substantive element to the policy as well, but sometimes it's hard to find those. Vaping? They yeah, uh, tobacco vaping. use and prevention was a big 
we have a lot of policies on that and we're just getting up to speed with new guidelines set by the state the county will come in every year and assess how well we do as a public organization promoting um, policies and practices that prevent tobacco usage um, so one of those elements that they grade us on is to make sure our policies align with what the state would like interesting and I will say, I know I mentioned this at one of our prior meetings, but the, the policy committee really does a deep dive into these and, and test them for workability and make sure that the language matches with, you know, what our expectations are. So we're certainly grateful for that group. Yeah, very grateful for that committee. Yeah, All right. Okay, so uh, that takes us to uh, board action item A, which is the approval of those board policy updates that uh, we just had the, uh, the second reading of. Uh, may I have a motion to approve? So move. Uh, second? Second. Any discussion? All right, Mr. Jenkins, please call the roll. Dr. Dabrico? Yes. Dr. Wise? Yes. Dr. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Lester? Yes. All right, we're now moving on to treasure action items uh, A through H. Is that right? Please. A so. through G with H being the approval. Oh, right, yeah, I'm yep. sorry, A through G. Uh, may I, uh, Mr. Jenkins, well, I guess that you've uh, already presented those, so can I have a motion to accept those? So moved. Uh, second? Second. Any discussion? All right, Mr. Jenkins, please call the roll. Dr. Wise? Yes. Dr. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Lester? Yes. Dr. Dabrico? Yes. It's creating a sense of tension there. Sure <laughs> Sorry. Clapping too soon, voting too late. <laughs> All right, then we have superintendent action item A separate, correct? Yes, sir. All right. I'll present uh, that. Mr. Rafe, can you present that? Yes, present superintendent action item A, which is the recommend approval of administrative contract for Stephanie Dabrico, Assistant Director, Elementary Pupil Services, 260-day uh, contract, three-year term. Okay, I have a motion to uh, approve. So moved. A second? Second. All right, Mr. Jenkins. Dr. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Lester? Yes. Dr. Dabrico? Abstain. Dr. Wise? Yes. And then, Mr. Rafe, can you present superintendent action items B through H? Yes, I'll present superintendent action items B through H for approval. Okay, can I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Mr. Jenkins? Mr. Lester? Yes. Dr. Dabrico? Yes. Dr. Wise? Yes. Dr. Wallach? Yes. And then we have a Chief Operations Officer Action Item A. Mr. Meyer? Uh, yes, I'd like to present uh, Chief Operation Officer Action Item 11A for approval. All right, can I have a motion? So moved. A second? Second. Okay, Mr. Jenkins? Oh, any discussion? I'm sorry. We don't technically have to accept this. I was going to say, with, with lots, can we add lots of regret? Thank you for the, uh, the okay. obligatory comment. Mr. O'Brien, usually, <laughs> since he's not here, I will appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Jenkins? Dr. Dabrico? Yes. Dr. Wise? Yes. Dr. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Lester? Yes. All right. Uh, I think that's our last action item, so can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Right. Any discussion? I'm hearing none, Mr. Jenkins. Dr. Dabrico? Yes. Dr. Wise? Yes. Dr. Wallach? Yes. Mr. Lester? Yes. All right, thank you. Bam.